Hey there and welcome to the second video in the Git Basics series. In the previous video, we knew what is Git and why it should be used. And we also covered the installation steps. Now, the first thing you have to do after installing Git is configuring your username and email. To do so, just open up a terminal and use the following commands. This information will be baked into the changes you make in a project to identify who made the changes. Once that is done, let's move on to the beginning of our very first project. And in this video, we will cover the basic commands to be used for initializing our project and also the preliminary steps of working with Git. The first command you will run in your new uh, project is git init. What it does is it will initialize a new empty repository. Here I am using Visual Studio code which has a built-in terminal and I have a folder uh, open here which I can access using the terminal. If your text editor doesn't provide you with this option, you can very well use uh, any other terminal. But I would recommend VS Code or any other IDEs as they provide excellent support for version control systems inside the IDE itself. I have a dedicated section for version control and it also provides me with other useful insights. For a note, it can be used exclusively in the command line also. For beginners, it is recommended to use Git through the command line only so that you can understand various concepts. Once you have got around that, you can very easily adapt to the GUI based Git provided in your IDE. As your project grows in size, it becomes difficult to manage everything through the command line. The GUI will be helpful, but for now, let's use the command line for learning. The first command to start with is git init. This will initialize a new empty git repository in this folder. Once this is done, git will start to track the files in this repository. You can, uh, you can have whatever project you want inside this folder, a Java project, a web application, Android project, you name it but it will also be a git repository. You can use all the git commands inside this folder. If you click the source control icon in VS, we can see that our repository has been created. As we saw in the previous video, after every meaningful change to the project, we have to commit our changes. Understanding what a commit actually means is very fundamental for mastering git. Pay careful attention. This will help you understand some upcoming features like merge and rebase very easily. So what is a commit? A commit is a collection of changes you make to any given state of a project. When you create a commit, Git records it permanently in the history of the project. Starting from an empty project, we keep on adding commits to the project one after another. Uh, note that a commit is not a state of the project. Each commit is the set of changes you make to the state of a project. A commit can be anything, for example, creating a new file, modifying an existing file, deleting a file, or a combination of all these. The general convention is that one single commit should focus on one particular thing only. Uh, there are a few steps you have to do to create a commit. By default, the changes you make, uh, by changes I mean creating file, modifying, deleting, etc. are uncommitted. We have to move the changes first from uncommitted state to staging and then we can create a commit with all the changes that we have staged. Staging is the intermediary between uncommitted and committed state. Uh, you can add the changes to staging by using the command git add. Specify a particular file you want to add, for example, git add index.html. As I told previously, a commit contains a set of changes. You can add individual changes to the staging area and then commit them as a one single commit. Use the command git commit to actually perform the commit. Uh, one additional parameter we have to pass to uh, the git commit command is the commit message which you can do by using minus m argument. The commit message is a summary of all the changes you have made in the in uh, the particular commit. The name of a commit should be meaningful and it is also important. We will have a future video covering good commit conventions such as how to write a good commit message. So enough of the theory, let's actually see how to use git. Let me create a new file called index.html and add some content to it. At any, at any time, you can use the command git status to know what is going on in the re git repository. Let me use that right now. Here I am informed that index.html file is not tracked. You can also check the same by looking at the file explorer in VS Code. Index.html is marked in green, meaning that it is a newly created file. Let us commit our 
uh, file. Let us create our first commit. Add index.html to the staging by using git add index.html. Now let's again check the status using the same command git status. Here we can see that um, the file has been added to staging and is ready for committing. Use the command git commit hyphen m within quotes my first commit. Here my first commit is the commit message. Uh, on pressing enter this will create a new commit. Uh, it will also show a summary of what changes are involved in this particular commit. We added one file that is index.html and it contains 12 lines. We can use the command git log to see a history of all the commits we have made. Here we have made only one commit and that is what it is showing. It also shows the time when the commit was made and the author who made the commit. Okay, let's make some more changes to the project. I'm going to add even more content to index.html. Why not add a heading tag that says, uh, says just hello. Save the file and check the git status now, git status. It tells me that I have made some modifications to index.html. Let's again do the same thing. Let's create a new commit. First add index.html to change uh, to a staging through git add index.html and then commit using git commit minus m added welcome message. Now in this commit summary, we can see that one insertion has been made. If you check git log, you can see the, uh, see both the commits we have made so far. Okay. Now let's add some more content. Okay. Uh, let me add a paragraph tag. Now let me create an external style sheet styles.css. Uh, let's check the status now using git status. It shows that one file is untracked and there is one modified file. Uh, the untracked uh, file is styles.css and one uh, index.html has been modified. Untracked refers to newly created files, whereas modified refers to files that were uh, already present. That is, we had already committed index.html, but we have made some more uh, additional changes. We can add the files individually to the staging area using git add index.html and then uh, doing git add styles.css. But if you have uh, so many files, it will become tedious. So instead, we can use the command git add iphone iphone all to stage all the changes. By checking git status, we can see that both index.html and styles.css has been moved to staging and uh, we are ready for committing. Let me commit it real quick. Uh, the commit message would be add a paragraph tag. Okay. Now that we know how to create commits using the command line, let me show you how IDEs can be helpful. I'll add one more line inside index.html. Notice the green highlight here. It means that this is a newly inserted line. Okay, uh, I can open the version control tab here. The same info we saw previously using git status is presented in a more visual manner. Now in the source control tab, we can add individual files to the staging by clicking this plus icon. All the changes can be staged using uh, the, this plus, uh, plus icon. We have to specify the commit message here, add image. Okay, and uh, let's press control enter. That's it, we have created a commit, bit convenient, right? One more extension I like uh, specific for VS Code is the git graph extension. You can install it using the extensions tab. It uh, presents a result similar to what we saw in git log, but it is presented in a more nice linear uh, graphical uh, way. You can click on each commit to know more about the changes that were involved in every uh, single commit. So I think that wraps up the video. So let's summarize uh, what we learned in this video. And the first thing we saw was how to create a new repository using git init, then how to add files to staging through git add individual file name or git add hyphen hyphen all to add all this uh, all the changes. And finally, how to create a commit using git commit command. So thank you for watching and stay tuned.